they're wide. I can go ahead and sit about right here. Move in, about right there. And oh, we're we'll recording. Yep. All right. So this is Joe's first real time of building a little 350. And the fun thing with this is we get to modify it pretty heavy duty wise. Uh, we're going to cut down the piston for the low and reverse. We're going to go with a 700R 4L60E center support roller sprag. We're going to keep the four um, pinion planets in the rear and the front. We're okay with that. Modify the valve body. We're going to dual feed this one. Um, not with a plate, but with through the orifice and through the pump. And um, this is going in a 4x4, four four, I believe a 1976 uh, square body with uh, a new crate motor and running 36 inch tires, so there's some rotational mass there. And uh, running a 205 T case, which is the gear driven, which is a really nice T case. And anyway, we're going to build this. This is a core that he found. It's obviously a little dirty. We're cleaning it up right now. And um, we're going to have Joe. He's done one tear down in a, in a moderate bit rebuild of a 350. This is a good training transmission. This is old school stuff. Uh, so we'll see how he does. Focusing here, so you get it to where you get it focused. You tell me what you think is focused. Okay? Yeah, that's okay. probably about. So you know you can pull back, right? I'm sorry, let me remind myself. Okay, so this is focused. Yeah. Here, let me make sure Joseph's in the picture. There you go. All right. Okay. This is. Okay, so you're gonna follow me a little bit. With no, 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 no. Oh, never use, never right, pull right. the camera. You're going to pull it like this, okay? This is so what this is for. you and mm -hmm. zoom in and pull back. What do you need? Oh. All right, we're recording, so, you know. Uh, I'll All right. So one of the things uh, we try to do, or I, part of my philosophy is, that this skill is basically a lost art anymore. Uh, a lot of shops now uh, do a R and R, and they replace it with a factory unit because the uh, warranties are there, and uh, they can just, you know, pay full bore, get a 24, even uh, 100,000 mile uh, valve train or drive train uh, warranty, and. That's not the kind of work I do anymore, uh, used to. I mean, back in the day, we used to rebuild 350s like this all the time. And um, we don't do that anymore. So most of the work I do is either going to be uh, for high performance, heavy duty. We do even brand new vehicles. Um, a lot of them are... Uh, Uh, a lot of them are uh, vehicles or trucks like this one's going into a, a good size 4x4. Four four. Oops, sorry, Joe. <laughs> and um, he'll be tearing this down and he'll rebuild it. Um, we'll go ahead and let him take the pan off. Okay. Take the valve body off, pan off, valve body off. It's probably dirty. There you go. Rewind. This is was sitting in a field somewhere. As most of them are. The customer actually drove all the way to Durango, Colorado to pick up from the house in Mexico. Becoming really rare. In fact, where is pre 
pretty much always have to order <coughs> and, um, <coughs> for this application. Uh, stock converter usually works quite well. <coughs> we have had a built in, <coughs> but in this case, we're just going to run a stock converter. So. Yeah, so it's all nice and good now. Yep. Oh, wow, what the hell was that? Here, I'm going to split it up so you can... Uh, that looks like clutch material. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so that's yeah. nasty. Oh, yeah, that's all clutch material. So, oh. Yeah, it's oil filter. I know. Yeah, yeah it's old school oil filter there. So, anyway, we'll put that aside. We can clean the pan and then we'll get uh, we'll put the bow body in it. But yeah, that's pretty nasty. <laughs> anyway. So rust on the side here. There you go. <laughs> so anyway, this is kind of a lost art from uh, I'm pretty sure Joe's probably the only person in his whole school that knows anything about this. Out of all, how many how many kids are in your in your school? I don't know, like four hundred. Four hundred. I'm pretty damn sure you're it. <laughs> and that's the thing. Back in my day, this would be a little more commonplace. The kids, we had shop class, we had uh, uh, woodworking, we had all sorts of uh, we had automotive classes. Um, this is all the stuff you got to learn in high school, and all of that is gone, and all that has gone away. You can't even get some basic electronics figured out anymore. So that's kind of a bummer. But um, there's other guys like me in the country that teach younger people how to do some basic stuff. And everybody should know how to do some basic maintenance. Um, on any vehicle, females should know how to know something, if not a lot, about their vehicle. If nothing else, not to just kind of get ripped off every once in a while. A lot of that has gone by the wayside, which is fortunate. But, um, uh, good. Some of that has gone by the wayside, fortunately. But, um, it still exists. And if you, uh, if you don't know something about what you're doing, what you're driving, and what could be wrong, whether it be brakes, your, uh, brake squealing, bulb, your, wheel bearings going out, um, steering loose, I mean some basic stuff that gets made is your shocks, your struts that need to be replaced, and, uh, or, or do they? Or are they just telling you they need to be replaced and you end up paying for it? But um, anyway, it's good not to be ignorant of these things and that's what we try to teach. Even if it's a little bit, he's learning more than probably most need to, <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that either. And uh, of course, they use a little cotton tape. Yeah, yeah. And that, just so it's a little cleaner than that. There you go. We try not to use cotton cleaner too much because it's stinky. And, uh, anyway, here we go. Anywho, so that's, that's what we're doing. And we're going to follow him a little bit through not all the tear down, and not all the build, but we'll get to some of the modifying that we do for something like this. And, um, and it should be a fun build. It's a good thing to learn and understanding what the modifications are for and do. Adding more clutches, um, it displaces more energy. That's the whole point of having more than one clutch. And um, increase, increase the line pressure. We'll do the, uh, as I mentioned, we'll do the uh, dual feed on these. That way there's more volume of um, fluid behind that piston. That's usually for the direct drum. But we'll go through all that. And, uh, we'll have some fun with it. This thing's hard to move. A little bit. Which makes it smoother. So he just took off the valve body and then he'll go ahead and take off the pump. Can I just go. film him taking it down? Yeah, sure. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to 
just going to throw these in the pan. Let it throw. So we're going to have to take that off. This way. We're going to take the parking paw. Applying up to this, yeah. The, we'll take well. We'll take it off later. But the parking paw is off out anyway, yep. and that restricts us from. Uh, we got to be able to take out the piston, <coughs> reverse low and reverse pistons on there. So now you take the pump off. Clean this up. Yeah. You shut it off. Okay. We don't want the box. Anyway. And you'll zoom in a little bit. Pull out the whole assembly. Pull out the whole assembly. The band looks good. Ooh. Oh, that's not good. Oh, look at that. Look. Go ahead and. Oh, well. So, what happened there is the, uh, the snap ring came off. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and all the strings are everywhere now. Yeah, that's funny. That's a little. Oh, that's a little different. I've never seen that before. Yeah. No, I haven't either, actually. That's new. It's different. Is there the, the snap ring ring? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. So it piled into the thrust washer here on the top line. A lot line. of the springs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, so that. That'll be our problem. Yeah, so this that is, piston yeah. is damaged? Uh, the piston is probably okay. At least it looks like it. Over this way, Matthew. So you're going to have to buy a new one. You can yeah. zoom out a little. Focus. So, can you reach up? I'll throw these in Yeah, the all these springs got jacked. Look at the springs here. So we do have another drum, and he's also got another core I'll have him bring, and we'll, we'll use for core. But yeah, so this is toast on this side here. flashlight? Uh, the flashlight? Oh, I have it in the other room. Oh. Okay, go ahead. And oh, here's this stuff. There you go. Oh, okay. I'll go grab it right quick. So let's see the back side of this on the planetary. It's probably okay. Yeah, that's okay. I'm just gonna. Yeah. Stick that up. Washer. I'll do this one too. So you know where it's at. Get those. Okay. Let me go get your flashlight. Could I see us? All of this stuff. I'll just leave these pieces here. Here you go. You want to hold it? Or dig? I might be able to get it. Okay. You see it? There you go. Hmm. This is always the fun part. Getting these little tiny snap rings out of the Oral 60s, 700s, TH350s. Um, 
We've always modified some of the snap rings. Is that snap ring gone? I think it's gone. It is gone, it. isn't it? Uh oh. Well, well, this is not coming off. Well, let me see here. We may have an issue here. Yeah. Because uh, I can't pull it off. It'll else. come off. Oh, okay. There you go. Wow. There we go. So we That's lost awesome. the snap ring then, didn't we? So we'll have to check. Yeah, we lost a lot of snap rings. Yeah. Huh. So we'll check the out input shaft. Well, actually, you know what? It feels fine. It doesn't feel like it's uh, rounded or beveled or anything. So I think we're good on that. And I, I have a ton anyway if we need one. But um, <clears throat> I think that output shaft will be the input side of the output shaft will be okay. I'm just this one. I'm gonna put my stuff on the shelves there. Can we leave this drop? Yeah, we'll take it apart. Oh, that one, that's the direct drum. Yeah, I'll just leave all this stuff here. All right, that's fine. So this is the direct drum that we here's, modified. Here's snap ring. This is that one the one that goes in the middle? Well, this drum we're going to have to replace. It's for sure. All, all right, right, you want to get the rest of it out? The good screwdriver. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know where that ran off to, dude. Oh, it's, I don't know. I know. I don't know where that went. Did you leave it in the other garage? I don't think so. I didn't take it in there. I really don't know what the hell happened to it. When you lose a favorite tool, right. that's no fun. We got a little screwdriver that we used, especially, but we might have put it somewhere else in the drawer. So, all right, let me turn it off. Oh. And the big one. Oh, that thing. Found the screwdriver. Uh, get your major snap ring off. Oh, you got to get the snapping off first, though. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. You got to take your snapping off first. All right. Oh, there we this go. It was getting stuck in there. Oh, uh, was it? There's this one. A little cut in it. It's low battery, by the way. Yeah, I know. It's all right. There you go. There you go. Wow, so 
One, two, three, four. Well, that sucks. Right, one. Oh, it's got five. One, two, three, four, five. So five. We're going to make this into six. Just because. Yeah, so that's that part. So we can go ahead and put this assembly back. Yeah. Uh, we'll use some goop, but we'll only reverse plant it. So we always check, make sure the pinions aren't loose, and don't have any play. So that's in pretty good shape. And the ring gear is not broken, no broken teeth or anything weird. Sometimes uh, somebody will have rebuilt this with a broken planet and they'll try to reuse the ring gear and it makes all sorts of noise but, or can so yeah we got a five we're gonna make this into six look at the pitting on the uh, clutches this is old this is really old so we're gonna take out the piston that'll be next here and get rid of this thing we replace these stupid things with at least uh, where's our one piece space savers I bought some mm -hmm. oh. Yep, here we go. The one piece case savers. Yeah, we could yeah, throw that in the trash. So we use these for there's a four piece one which is a little more difficult to install. And then there's uh we pull back on. And then there's uh the four piece which is a lot more difficult. So the snap ring was gone off of this, but this is in really good shape. It didn't taper anything or make anything weird, so the snap ring will fit on there. So the snap ring's fine. So usually it'll wear this out so that the snap ring can't fit in there. So it just popped it off, a piece of metal or something pulled it off and broke it off. But that's that's more than fine. So go ahead and just take that apart. <coughs> Truck springs all, huh. all over the place. What? One, two, three, four, five. So this is five. We're going to make this six, which is great. So we'll have six and six clutches, and we'll uh, have six in the back. What's that? Broken metal all up on the sides. Yeah, we'll clean all this up. Although, um, actually, we're not going to use this drum because. Take that piston out, this will be able to come out. Okay. Oof, we got stuff hanging yeah, it up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, there's a spring right there that's holding it down. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, so this is kind of a mess, unfortunately. A little unusual. Actually, I've not ever seen one lose the, the retaining spring. See if our piston will come out now. Yeah. Yep, there we go. <laughs> oh, funny. So one of the fun things is trying to get that snap ring out on the bottom. <laughs> get it? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. Got it? Yep. There you go. Yep. Nice. You can, uh, yeah, take that and skip it. You actually use this one? Oh, it's got a little hook on it, and then just kind of scooch that around. Pull it up. Okay. Actually, with your finger, it'll come right off. It's not hurt. Let me try to get this. Uh, kind of hard to get it past. So yeah, but if you push it this oh, way. Oh yeah, I see. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and you gotta go. Oh, you do have it down. Should come off. I don't know why that's hanging on. 
Let's see here. Um, it's actually getting hung up on, on the, the tab there. Let's see here. Oh. Yeah, it's this thing here. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hung up. I don't know, so let me try something here. Okay, there we go. Ta da! Yeah. Go ahead and pull that off. And then remember, we used compressed air in that hole to push that piston up? Yeah. Okay. Ta da! Let me have the blue light affects the camera here. You may have to pull it up higher. Oh, there you go. There you go. Put it on. There you go. Remember which hole it is and use the cow? Yep. It's going to be this hole right this there. Side. Nope, this one. Right here. Oh, that's what I thought. I was like, what? Oh, there you go. Yep. Yeah, so now this one has. There you go. Sit on the bench, and then, so what we're going to do, as I've done this before, is we're going to take a steel, we're going to take a clutch, and we're going to knock that much off. So you take your caliper, and, oh, and go ahead and measure these two together. What is that? One fifty-nine. One fifty-nine. So that's what we're going to take off the pistol. One sixty, I guess. One six. Well, it's good to go one sixty. That's, that's the more appropriate measurement for that. Okay. All right. We'll put that on the lathe and we'll get that. So you're going to take an overall measurement. It might be easier if I take this off and measure. Yeah, you're going to take those off anyway. But actually, just get a measurement right quick. So you're just going to measure from here to there. Okay, and that's what we're going to use as our measuring spot. Okay, let me get it in focus here. All right, so that'll be our measuring spot. What do you show there? 1350-ish. What is it? 1.350 is what we're going to go with. Okay. All right. Yeah. Or maybe let's get to make sure we're going to got a pretty good accurate reading. So you want to go three 1.350 is what we're going to go for. Okay. okay. We'll get the drum set up on there and get it leveled out and then we'll start shaving. A little quick calculation here. He's gonna go to a final of 1.190 and then we'll check our when we air check it we'll check our clearances and we'll go from there. Definitely old school way of doing this stuff. Got it? Yep. Okay. All right, you want to double check its rotation? Yep. So, what we'll do is we'll yeah, loosen it and then just press it all the way up against there. Good. There you go, just like that. And it'll, it'll get more squared up. Just hold it up on there, just hold it up on there. It's got a little pivot, so we may have to put the dial indicator on it to get it straight. And you know, eat, hit each one, so you'll turn it up, bring it back, and then hit it. Yep. There you go. With, yeah, with more constant pressure than. There you go. That's good. That should hold it, and we'll see where it's at. That's pretty oh, good. That'll work. Mm -hmm. Here you go. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and shave this down to 1.190. This is to keep harmonics, harmonic resonance from, from happening on this. It makes a horrible tone when you're cutting it. It's like a bell. So that's what that's for. Let me see, 1.20, and we want to go 
1.190, so we're going to get one more cut here. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this. I'm 96. Joe's at school in the mo at the moment, so I thought I would at least do this part for him. Well, he, this is the easy part, although this is fun. Just set the piston down in there without seals or anything, so it's just it's just without. You can still air check it with plenty of air pressure, and yet it will. Uh, we have a six clutches now instead of five, and uh, well, it's all blurry, I'm sure, but. Anyway, so we're going to put these in. We're going to put our uh, we're going to put our uh, center support in there, which, by the way, we're going to a 700 4L60E setup. So we're going to put this in, and then we'll air check it and make sure we got the clearance that we want. For. Plus, I can feel it down in there, and I like it. And now we're going to put in the piston with seals. We can, we can usually line up the tab here, eyeballing it in. There we go, seated down. Ring on. We replaced this bushing by the way. I didn't show that in the video, but that's one you always try to replace. Alright, just going to get the lovely task of Putting all the little springs on. Some of them come with a little cage, but this is an older one, and it just individual little springs. This um, yeah. There we go. So it's a little more interesting anyway. So one way to check your I mean I already had set it in here without everything and I applied air to air check it without the seals so you oh, can just okay. take the piston out nice and easy and uh, you can always measure your distance here where the where it lies which is already around 60 thousandths between the clutch and the edge of this yeah. okay and then that gives you a way to measure your clearance as opposed to eyeballing it and hearing it which I'm real used to so um, anyway so we got a good clearance so you can we use a one piece case saver yeah. figure out where this goes Remember where it goes? I believe so. Where that spring is that we have to beat on every time to get out? <laughs> yeah. Right? You want to put a little assembly lube on the back side of that? It has an anti clunk spring typically. And the ring goes kind of suck. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. This has to be where you, it doesn't go over the. That it has to go like that. Remember? You want to leave this gap. So that this uh, space, the um, case you saver. That out. There you go. That should work. That's a nice sound. Saver. Sounds about sixty thousandths. There we go. How about them apples? Make sure that the planet oh. thrust washer kind of stays weird. up on there. And that way, uh, there you go. You can actually put that in first, uh, uh, and then you can put your. Yeah, ring gear on it later a harder to see there you go this is not new uh, that you know, seal needs to come out yeah, that's since new. we're going to dual feed this um, that in the dual feed process that snap ring come or not snap ring uh, lip seal comes off. There you go. There you go. Let's go ahead and stack it and see where we're at clutch-wise, because I'm not sure what we have. That, that should be it. You, you know, just the clutches got plate down. Oh, see, you got a bunch of gap there. See the gap here? Because we took that backing plate out, remember? Yep. Oh, wow, yeah. So we don't have to t cut off, cut much. But we'll get an idea. Not much. So you only got about 35 thousandths of that, and plus we have clutch on clutch. So what we're going to do is go ahead and we can either shave the plate down a little, or we can go ahead and cut the piston down, which I think we have room in the piston to cut down. So I have to take a measurement on it. We'll get that here in a second. From there to there, that's right. All right, so we have plenty of room. What do we got there? 730. Yeah. 30. So we're going to knock off a whole hundred. Yeah, literally a hundred. 
Okay. Well, get on it. So I'm gonna let you chuck it up and all that good stuff. going to uh, do a test fit here, see what kind of plans we get with five. Yeah, now you can, you got to, oh, no, nope, no, nope, we got to put your spring in. Look at these ones. Oh, yeah. There's springs. So you'll use your compressor, remember, once you get all those in, you'll get your compressor in. There we go. Is that past that little loop I can't tell? Yep, you were good. It stays within the, in the little lip there, and the, yeah, I was the little humpy parts, which that, that helps keep the snap ring in. Oh, I see. see? The lighting. Okay. Yeah, it's the lighting. <laughs> Definitely. There you go. And we'll, uh, Top of that. Put it on the pump and air check it here in a sec. Yep. about 70 thousandths, which is plenty, and it gives us a lot of volume, so the dual feed is we're going to plug that hole up, and that's actually what we probably will do next, and make sure I got a, I got a, uh, a little cap for that, so that hole, and cap it, so and that, yep. yeah, and that gives it dual feed, um, yeah. so that's your, that's your forward drum, and that one's been cut down, and we're going to, Clean that up and then we'll show you that. And it's still yeah, a big gap. Yeah. Really? Oh, no. oh, cool. All right. So we can get six in there then, huh? Let me see. Oh, gosh, yeah. All right, cool. So go ahead and get room for a clutch. Yep. Exactly. Oh, yeah, we do. See? Nice, nice. Can find that one. Grab some air. Or maybe we use a little plate in the bigger snapper. Oh, is it a thicker snapper? Yeah. Oh, this one? Oh, that one. That's this one. That's is thicker. That? Yeah. yeah, that's thicker. Yeah. Not a lot. Yeah, we'll use that one. Let's try that. Right. Let's try that combination. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a little extra space. Yeah, so we get a little extra volume in there. I mean, I mean we could be measuring this, of course, but um, I'm going off well, my... I'm working with what we got, basically off my typical sound. So what we decided to do is take the thicker plate and... Oh, wow. Yeah, I know you gotta go so quite a bit. Oh, okay. We'll take the thicker plate and we're gonna take off 20 thousandths just to give us a little extra volume um, for f fluid and then we'll actually get a real measurement and see where we're at. I'd, uh, I'd like to While he's doing that, <clears throat> I'll just kind of explain that um, adding more clutches helps to displace the energy that comes um, in the form of load. Um, the load source from, of course, the engine, just putting power to through the transmission, which is why we call it a transmission. It's transmitting the um, chemi internal chemical energy in the combustion cycle, which is putting force on the crank through the pistons and that energy gets transferred through the transmission so you have gearing and um, the more clutches we have 
it helps to displace that energy from the load off the wheels and the weight of the vehicle and any incline or mud or whatever you're going through that's all energy and of course there is quite a bit of parasitic loss um, in transmissions but um, that's why standards are more efficient in that regard there's less parasitic loss straight transfer of energy uh, which some of the fluid dynamics um, ha we, we lose a lot through the converter of course um, through its um, coupling the fluid coupling and the converter um, so these are just basics uh, to understand in the energy that gets uh, we're trying to capture and not lose so much um, to get it down to the wheels cool. from your engine and so Look at that. Go ahead and apply pressure all the way. There you go. That looks way better. Yummy. So you just set it in the hole there. Yep. Get it straight. Mm -hmm. No, you're not straight. Okay. So you go ahead and just forward. No, you're in reverse. Yep, I am. Okay, there you go. So don't pull it out, but you go ahead and reverse yep. and then let it come out on its own. A little harder and, and tap like that. And then just pull, let it come all the way out. There you go. Is that all we're doing? And that's it. Okay. All right. That's it. There you go. Remember, you got to spin it a little bit. To get it to... I don't think I could. Yeah. Wow, it went in right away, huh? Yeah. All right. Now you can throw it in the on the drum. In the case, rather. <laughs> there you go. You're in. There you okay. go. Uh, this actually goes. Yeah. Yeah. Does it have to be? No. Jeez. Yeah. Very good. There we go. Yeah, that's that's right. And then we'll put the serv yep. the apply servo. Ta-da! Those little tabs just right. <laughs> Confusing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> what the? It's like this. Oh, well, look at your your plate. It, you can look at your plate and see yeah, where the where tabs this are. Tab is. Where is this? Where's this thing? It goes on there. There you go. That's amazing. <laughs> there you go, the wavy. And then we'll put our pump, but we'll do that later. Okay, because we gotta we just we gotta finish yeah, this tap. So this is just to show the, All right. <clears throat> the roller size difference in the stock 350. Try to get some focus. This is the stock 350 and the 700 or 4060E. Plate thicknesses are the same. It's your race. And the surface area allows for more displacement of that energy or load weight on that center support. I had too much in play. And I remember we had this out, but I had pulled it from another drum, so I wasn't real sure. I had the suspicion. Yep, we left it out. And that goes right there.
where we're at now. Much, much better. That's it. Well, we're getting a little bit of snow today. And Joe is at his dad's house. One thing we had left was the valve body plate, so that's what we're going to work on right now as we speak. And we'll let the snow do what it does. So on this plate, we're going to drill basically just three holes. We'll see how this goes. I have this hole in this table for pumps and different things. So I'm going one, um, I'm going to go 123, come on, I'm too slow, not grabbing with the hoop, there we go, there we go, don't press real hard, so we try to make sure all the pan bolts are in, all the pump bolts are good and secure, uh, occasionally I'll use uh, a blue thread lock, I won't use red, for those, um, just for some extra security. And uh, but anyway, that's kind of about it. So in recap, this unit has the 4060 700 center support case saver. We've cut down the rear piston, uh, the low and reverse that now has um, six clutches, and we have six in the forwards and we have six in the direct. Left the intermediates with the normal that we do. It's not usually that big a deal. Band is good. Ready to get out of here. There is, uh, I'm sure most of you know who Mike Rowe is by now. Kind of a uh, spokesperson, if you will, or what, what have you, for kind of the blue collar market, trade industry, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's kind of a growing trend of people, young kids, that are no longer going to college, but going to trade schools. And I can tell you right now, as he has professed on many uh, different programs, that the trade industry is getting very difficult. Electricians, plumbers, bricklayers, pipe fitters, the people that construct the buildings that everybody likes to have their computers in, and doctors who need the facility put together to even be able to help anybody. How about the mechanics that keep the keep the uh, vehicles going for the ambulance, the fire stations? Those people are without them, nobody can do their job, and. Uh, that's a growing trend, or a market, I should say, that is uh, in the labor market that is no longer, well, I hope it grows. I find that uh, very few young people really care to be, have anything to do with anything that requires, you know, manual labor. And that's unfortunate. We've taught a lot of our young people that, you know, they all glamorize the rock star status of being a musician or, well, <laughs> that's not what blames. That's a whole different deal there, having been a musician myself. But, um, you know, everybody wants to be a rock star. And a lot of people don't want to put the, the work into things. And learning a trade, my whole thing in life is you learn how to do a number of things. You learn how to do a number of things and be damn proficient in everything that you, you try to be, and everything you try to accomplish, and everything that you try to learn. And learn as much as you can <clears throat> and not be kind of stuck in one thing and one thing only. There's a lot of aspects of life that require knowledge in all areas including health and fitness, including our bodies, including the stuff that we use and work on, and uh, that kind of thing. 
and that's super important. And uh, gotta get to this next. Anyway, um, there's lots of things that uh, kids need to learn, and I don't think it's being taught. Schools no longer teach shop, woodworking. Hell, they don't even teach you how to balance a checkbook. Nobody needs a checkbook anymore. The bank does it for you. You've got credit cards. You can be found anywhere, anytime with a credit card. It's weird. It's weird. I'm certainly glad I grew up in the time that I did. Everybody's addicted to cell phones, computers, but nobody knows how to make them. Nobody knows barely even how to use them. They get to learning what they need out of it, and that's it. They're done. They won't learn any further than what they need, need to use the device for, the electronics. But I can guarantee you it's a handful of people, literally, more or less, in the world that knows how a cell phone is made, the components required, the uh, what's required to make the components, the materials, the raw materials, the process that it has to go through to make those raw materials, and it's it's a huge deal. And what about the infrastructure? How many people even know about that? Know how to do anything with it? It's amazing how many billions of people literally are reliant on the handful of knowledgeable people that really know how to make things work. That's what's important. That's the change. And we're losing more and more of those people that know how to make anything work. Caltech, MIT, some of the regional tech schools around the nation. I hope more and more kids find it useful. And college is, is useful if you use it correctly and you're actually learning something and doing something with it. Otherwise it's a waste of time. And you only get in, you only get out what you put into it, like anything else in life. So hopefully um, Hopefully we'll see a, a growing trend in the trades. And to know more than one thing, I think is vastly important. Till next time.